A strange sight in the sky last night over Oahu caught the attention of many people. Do aliens exist? We had been scouring the skies for quite a while, but after decades of listening for telltale radio signals and seeking clues that other worlds might be even marginally habitable, it's been thin picking so far. Although astronomers have pinpointed a few potential locations in the universe where life might exist, as well as the odd unexplained signal, no hard proof of extraterrestrial life has been found so far. But what if there was? Our solar system is now home to an enigmatic object. Such an object had never previously visited us from beyond the reach of our sun. Have we been discovered by extraterrestrials? What brings them here? Join us as we explore the recent discovery of an advanced alien object entering the atmosphere. For Alex Dietrich, it was an ordinary day of flying until it wasn't. While on a training trip with a colleague in another plane, the U.S. Navy lieutenant commander flew her F divided by a minus 18 F Super Hornet fighter jet over the peaceful expanse of the Pacific Ocean near San Diego. A voice then broke through the static on the radio. The caller identified themselves as an operations officer from the USS Princeton and requested that they look into a mysterious flying object that had been seen 80,000 feet in the air on multiple occasions before descending to the ocean and then disappearing. When the two jets arrived at its last known location close to the ocean's surface, the water seemed to be practically boiling. Dietrich caught sight of it a few moments later, an oval white object about 40 feet in length floating just above the water looking like a wingless capsule or what she would call a tic-tac. Just as they were drawing near, it vanished, hurtling skyward at an unbelievable pace, leaving behind a flat, smooth sea. In 2004, a video recorded by sophisticated tracking technology on one of the planes was leaked to the New York Times, causing the now infamous tic-tac incident to become viral. The footage, which was later verified as real by the U.S. Department of Defense, shows the object as an oblong shadow against a brilliant sky. Then it jolts off camera to the left at an eerie pace. It's one of hundreds of strange occurrences that have reached high-ranking authorities in the past few years. The first was the United States government's evaluation of UFOs in 2021, which has been renamed to the less exciting but more serious-sounding Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, or UAP. The United States Congress Subcommittee on National Security, the Border, and Foreign Affairs is conducting a hearing on the subject, and soon NASA will unveil the findings of its inaugural investigation into unidentified anomalous phenomena, putting their own spin on the doubtful label. The scientific community is now taking the lead in the ongoing American fascination with aliens, which began some 76 years ago and has persisted via stories of UFO sightings, strange lights, and the secrets of Area 51. However, how can one distinguish between plausible occurrences and wild speculation about conspiracies? What characteristics identify an actual anomaly as opposed to a strangely formed cloud or a Chinese balloon? The United States was hit by an unusual new wave of panic in the summer of 1947. Strange objects with flat disc-like shapes started appearing in reports from Michigan to Texas and from California to Maine. The story starts with an Idaho businessman and aviator in his single-engine Corps A-2. Kenneth Arnold had been searching for a crashed military aircraft one June afternoon when he noticed a brilliant flash over the Cascade Mountains in Washington. At 10,000 feet, there were nine objects in the sky that resembled enormous reflecting pie pans that were circling, swooping, and flipping around in formation as they zipped from peak to peak. Arnold estimated that their speed was over 1,200 miles per hour, which was twice the record holder speed at the time. The United States' fascination with UFOs began at this point. Up until that point, not a single American newspaper had reported the existence of extraterrestrial craft in Earth's atmosphere since records began in 1770. Experts had written off Arnold's allegation as a tall story at first, but within a month sightings numbering in the tens of thousands across the nation caused widespread fear. This is the first challenge of evaluating UAPs. The more we look for them or even think about them, the more we seem to spot them. Case in point, the recent coronavirus pandemic. Researchers in the United States discovered that instances of municipal lockdowns, when residents were ordered to remain indoors, were significantly associated with an increase in UAP sightings. 
Maybe it was only that more people were going outside to look at the sky, however, the researchers also provide an alternate theory suggesting that people's increased focus on them was the actual cause of the rise. This theory is supported by the fact that the sighting increases started slowly following each lockdown, indicating that curiosity grew due to the lack of other things to do. Additionally, it is consistent with the observation that UAP sightings tend to occur during recessions and other economic downturns. We tend to give more thought to these strange things when we're bored or need a distraction. A total of 350 sightings were reported by pilots and other personnel in just one year compared to 144 for the entire 17-year period covered by the initial report. This represents a significant increase from the first iteration, which emerged in 2021, according to the U.S. government's assessment of UAPs in 2022. In reality, a new age of UFO mania has been noted by certain commentators, however, only a small percentage of UAPs are found to be genuinely unusual. So far, just about 2-5% to of the 800 sightings that NASA is looking at have not been explained. Simon Foundation President and Chair of NASA's as-yet-unpublished UAP study, David Spurgle, claims that people can be simply classified into two groups, the first are everyday things and events that can be classified as balloons, drones, atmospheric phenomena, and anomalies inside the camera itself. Whenever Spurgle hears of a strange occurrence involving flashing lights, he knows it is overwhelmingly likely to be caused by airplanes. An example from the second group is the 2015 gaffe committed by British astronaut Tim Peake while spending 186 days on board the International Space Station. He gazed out of a porthole and spotted a pattern of lights moving across the sky. He spotted three, then four, and he was perplexed, thinking he was seeing extraterrestrial spacecraft as he recounted the experience on a BBC chat program. But Pete quickly realized that what he was actually staring at were little drops, not faraway objects. The pee, which was originally intended to be recycled into drinking water, was pouring out of a nearby probe vehicle and turning into light-reflecting crystals. In an instant, as was the case with Peak, the commonplace can become fascinating by means of basic optical illusions such as the reality-shifting ability of perspective. The nearly Earth-sized planet Venus, which is located 44 million miles from Earth, may be transformed into a spacecraft with ease. This happens also in the past. Little pieces of space dandruff which can be anything from crystallized water to insulation flakes, have been mistaken for aliens approaching from another planet. It can be somewhat challenging to confirm the nature of these objects without a second view from another camera. Their ISN. T enough information to discern if they are small objects near up or larger objects further away. Mount Haleakala in Hawaii is home to the exotic Panstars 1 telescope, which caught the attention of astronomers in October 2017 when they observed something peculiar. Something enigmatic was flying through space at an incredible rate of speed, which could have originated from beyond our solar system. Its shape was eventually determined to be either cigar-shaped or round pancake-shaped. In addition to its already rapid speed, Umiwamua was gaining momentum, reaching an estimated 85,000 miles per hour by November. This was particularly puzzling because the object in question lacked the characteristic tail of a comet, which is responsible for accelerating the object as it approaches the sun. The scientific community was perplexed. Did it happen to be a peculiar comet? Could something else be the case? A notable theoretical physicist and Harvard University science professor, Avi Loeb, who has become known as an outspoken alien hunter, has speculated that it may be a probe sent to Earth by a sophisticated alien civilization. Despite the widespread belief that Umiwamua was actually a comet, a very unique one, it seemed to fit all the criteria for a genuine UAP. Still, it falls short of what Spurgle considers to be sufficient proof of an alien civilization. Something really fast, something that our present knowledge of comet or asteroid behavior cannot account for, would be necessary for him to be truly impressed. According to Spurgle, it would be quite remarkable if they witnessed an object entering the solar system at half the speed of light and then gradually slowing down. He points out that Earth's velocity is only one-tenth of a percent of the speed of light. Spurgle considers the matter from a chronological standpoint. 
Nearby stars in our solar system typically have ages that differ from our sun's by a billion years or more. If these took about the same amount of time to produce spacefaring apes as ours, then the alien life out there might be as simple as microbes discovered in rocks from the Australian outback that are a billion years old. Or it could be as complex as technologically advanced civilizations that defy human understanding. Thinking about something like 100 million years is beneficial. Conventional technology, airplanes, cars, and other modern artifacts would impress but not shock a person living in 1923. We would all be suspected of being witches by someone from the year 1023. In technological terms, a thousand years is a huge leap. In Spurkel's estimation, 100,000 such steps equal 100 million years. Although it is still a possibility, NASA isn't planning on finding proof of extraterrestrial intelligence visits anytime soon. On the contrary, the report provides a chance to examine recent events all across the world by conducting a sort of sky audit. This encompasses unusual weather occurrences, some of which lingered as intriguing tales for generations before they were verified by science. Consider sprites, big electric discharges that are like glowing sky jellyfish and illuminate the upper atmosphere of the planet with bizarre red blobs and streaks. They first appeared in 1886 and were recorded again in 1989. Over a century after their first appearance, they originate above thunderstorms, and we still don't know what causes them. There's some really amazing things that people did not believe exist, says Spurgle, explaining that scientists were skeptical about sprites, despite anecdotal reports. It took the development of high-speed cameras before they were believed. He says it's not merely an intellectual exercise, unidentified aerial occurrences pose a real threat to aircraft and satellites. The Parks Observatory picked up a more targeted signal in January 2015. It had the characteristic microwave signature of a wavelength of 2.4 gigahertz. The researchers came to the realization later on that the interference could only be detected when their telescope was directed toward this particular piece of equipment. What's more, it happened only during the day when the employees were preparing their lunches. If someone opened the microwave door before it had timed out, it emitted a rush of strange radio signals. No extraterrestrials were involved in the resolution of the enigma. Having high-quality data is crucial for making any headway, be it with weird weather occurrences or claims of possible extraterrestrial spacecraft. Maybe someday we won't have to strain our eyes to make out fuzzy images of UFOs or other unexplained astronomical phenomena. But NASA is well aware of the critical need to remove any stigma associated with the UAP. Her co-worker recounted that upon Dietrich's planes returned to their ship following the Tic Tac incident, the whole crew had heard the story and thought it was hilarious. Despite the fact that most of the attention was unwelcome, the two soon became famous for their sighting and were subjected to an overwhelming number of interview requests that continued for years. This is a common occurrence, but what if we encountered aliens? Would it be possible to communicate with them? How might humans, should we ever make contact with extraterrestrial beings, convey our ideas and information to them, given that they have most certainly developed their own distinct modes of communication? The human race has a rich history of overcoming insurmountable linguistic obstacles. Experts in deciphering ancient scripts and languages sometimes look to common human behaviors for clues. For example, the way we might circle something essential in writing helps scientists unlock the Rosetta Stone, a decree that dates to 196 BC that provided a clue to understanding ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Another useful method is body language. For instance, the indigenous peoples the Spanish conquistadors encountered in the Americas relied on signals and gestures communicated with them. Maybe we shouldn't look to the terrible and bloody results of previous interactions as proof that this can be done successfully, but we humans are social beings that have adapted to share information and ideas with one another. Some extraterrestrial entities may exhibit behavior and thought patterns that are totally foreign to Earth. If they do, in fact, have a social structure, it may be completely foreign and incomprehensible to us. The question then becomes, how are we to deduce their intended meaning from orbit? You may pick up on about 7,100 different languages spoken by humans. However, humans aren't the only creatures that call Earth home. 
It's possible that all the languages and forms of life in the universe have some characteristics over many millennia. Life has become more complex through the process of natural selection, which involves keeping beneficial alterations and removing harmful ones. Evolutionary convergence occurs when several lineages of animals adapt to the same environment by acquiring shared traits. For example, when it comes to traveling, there are only so many ways that animals can go around according to the rules of physics and biomechanics. Despite sharing a common ancestor with a little lizard-like species that lived more than 300 million years ago, the wings of bats and birds function similarly because of this. Where else in the cosmos may these limitations apply differently? As far as our knowledge allows, the rules of physics apply to everything everywhere, including communication. Kirschenball contends that any of a variety of animal motions, whistles, or patterns of coloration on the skin of an alien creature, such as a cuttlefish, might serve as the foundation for their language. But as linguist Ian Roberts of the University of Cambridge points out, there is a limit to how much we can learn from animal communication. We are the only species that has language in the sense of an open-ended system that can be used to express anything you want to express, according to him. Without language, says Roberts, a technological civilization would be inconceivable. So would learning the language of an alien species change the way we see the universe around us? Even human language, explains Roberts, comprises much more than just speech. We communicate through writing, body movements, drumming, whistles, and more. What's really remarkable about human language is that, whatever form it's carried in, it has fundamentally the same properties, he says. It's interesting to question, we have a good idea what human grammars look like, so what might alien grammars look like? Intelligent extraterrestrial beings, says Roberts, might externalize their language in ways that we can't yet imagine. Through pheromones, magnetic fields, who knows what. But if we could decode that language, we would find it to be very similar to human language. Whether or not we could identify an interstellar signal as such is an open question. Even if we were to receive one, messages are an attempt by humans to prove their intellect. They offer details about Earth that any intelligent alien could decipher. Some of these topics would be familiar to researchers from other worlds, such as the periodic table of elements, which contains information about the chemical components of the universe. Various other messages contain mathematical descriptions of natural shapes, such as the nautilus shell spiral, pi up to a specific decimal. Place, water's chemical formula, hydrogen's physical properties, and others. In theory, if extraterrestrials were able to decipher our message, it would demonstrate that humanity has a foundational understanding of science. So, if intelligent extraterrestrial beings were to send out messages, might they do the same? And would we recognize it as a genuine signal? All of this raises the question of whether we really want to be so noticeable. Invasion is a common plot point in movies. Scientists are more than happy to let the world know that we exist. On rare occasions, they even send deliberate signals into space, like the now famous 1974 high powered radio transmission from Puerto Rico's defunct Arecibo Radio Observatory, which contained a basic picture of humanity. Earth is likely to gain greater visibility as a result of human activity. As long as we do not wipe ourselves out first by nuclear or other catastrophic means, the cloud of satellites orbiting Earth could be visible to extraterrestrial astronomers. Sova Navarro says that alien astronomers could even one day spot the cloud of satellites orbiting our planet. We would need to have a billion times what we have now, which sounds like a lot, he says. But we went from one car to over a billion cars in a few decades. Maybe if we're really interested in making first contact, we could make more of an effort to be recognized, like the Arecibo message. Another question we should ask ourselves is if anyone is looking our way to notice. Thanks for watching another episode of Mega Entertainment. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.